As we approach this moment in prayer, I'm reminded of a scripture verse, exactly where it is. I don't know, but it's in my heart. I know it's there. Yeah. I will tell of your great works before the congregation. And when you do that, you praise God for all that he has done for you personally. Yeah. Before we approach God with a new moment of prayer in this particular time, we certainly can reflect over the ways in which he has blessed. And we can think about them while we are in the congregation with other believers who know the Lord, who are trying to learn more about the Lord, and who are certainly seeking him during this moment in prayer. So I want to say one thing before the great congregation. And then when I say it, it's all to praise the Lord. Last year this time, mm, mm, mm. I was in the hospital for the first time in my life. No, you all were worshiping and I was dealing with some things. I won't go into all of those details again. Mm, no. But just the idea that 365 days later, yeah. instead of being stretched out for the first time, Amen. I'm able to stand before you and tell you that the Lord blesses us in degrees. Yes. Notice I said us, because we are all in the process of being blessed by the Lord in some area, some arena, some facet of your earthly existence. So if you hadn't seen it happen 100% yet, know that the Lord is still blessing us in degrees. And as we come before him today in prayer, let us be mindful of the fact that he is blessing us in degrees and let us be able to be patient and wait on his timing. Heavenly Father, we first of all thank you for your anointing. Yes, yes. We thank you for the umbrella of your anointing stretched over all of us, oh, yes, yes. individually and as a church of believers in you and your son, Jesus Christ. And we would ask, O oh Lord, that as we continue to live in this world, having different kinds of experiences, that you will dispatch your angelic hosts all around us, watch over us 360 degrees to the left, right, front, and back, be a protected presence before us, 24 7 24 hours a day seven days of every week be with us Lord when we travel near and far a whole lot of our members are going different places and we thank you for their opportunity to be able to go out and see the world that you've made at the same time as they travel to and fro we just ask your blessings be upon them to enable them to go out and come back with new experiences and new ways of praising you for all that you have done, for all of your handiworks, for all of the things that we stand in need of in prayer that cannot be articulated by one single voice. <clears throat> Let it be that you hear us inside of our being as we pray at this particular time. You know our needs. You know exactly where we are. You know where we are when it comes to our journey through this barren land and whatever it is that we need to be able to do next. Let it be that we have just enough light to see the step we're taking next. We not, might not see it all in one sweeping step, but each step we take, let it be that we have enough light to see ourselves stepping through our difficulties, 
stepping through our misunderstandings, stepping through the ways in which you are leading us to be better and better each and every day. Lord, we continue to pray and we pray without ceasing, believing and knowing that you have a way of causing things to work out. We might not see it all at the present moment, but let it be that we have enough faith to trust you and we'll wait on you. We ask your blessings upon us. We pray and ask your blessings upon us in the here and now and even in the beyond. For we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank God. I have a witness this morning that Jesus will fix it after a while. Don't fool me now. Do you believe that Jesus will fix it? Has the Lord been good to you? Oh, don't fool me now. Has the Lord been good to you? Well, I don't know about you all, but uh, he's been good to me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Once again, I stand here and I greet you in the mighty, marvelous, and miraculous name of Jesus. He who has suffered, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary, that you and I might have the right to the tree of life. Let the church say amen. Amen. The Bible says that we ought to give honor where honor is due. And I want to give honor to your pastor, my friend, Pastor Johnny Owens. And let's thank him for 25 years of faithful service. We thank God. You know, it's like I told y'all last time. I know it's been a while since I've been here. I I like coming to Greenview because y'all just make preaching easy for me. And I I appreciate that. Um, We thank God for the ushers, the the choir, the deacons, the leadership here. And um, we just thank God for this opportunity to come and to share a word. So, um, and I I guess I'll see some of y'all next week in New Orleans. (laughs) <laughs> that I'll be there. All right. But let us pray. Oh, gracious and eternal God, we thank you once again for this preaching opportunity. And once again, God, I profess that I cannot preach without the power and the presence of that Holy Spirit. I cannot preach, God, without the power and the presence of thine Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, bestow upon me a fresh anointing. I ask, oh God, that you would just anoint every word on this manuscript. Touch me, oh Lord, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And I ask, oh God, that you would just bless this wedding congregation. And so, Lord, we thank you and we give you all honor and glory. And we ask this in the mighty, marvelous name of Jesus, who is our Lord. And all the saints of God said together, amen. 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 Now, I will be honest, and y'all know I like to be honest. For the last three or four weeks, I was preparing this sermon called uh, When God is Silent. You know, I think a lot of times we preach stuff for us. Uh, The second Corinthians, the 12th chapter, when Paul was dealing with that thorn in in the flesh. I had been working on that for a while. But uh, after what happened last weekend uh, with uh, President uh, Biden, I I felt the Lord leading me to Malachi 
the third chapter. I'm only going to use one verse, and, and I don't like to normally I don't like to use that. I like to have a couple of verses to, to pick off the bone. But uh, today I want to turn our attention to the third chapter of Malachi, verse six. And I'm going to read it from the NIV version as well as the uh, Message Bible. It says, the word of God, I, the Lord, do not change. All right. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. And the Message Bible says, I am God. Yes, I am. I like that. I haven't changed. And because I haven't changed, you, the descendants of Jacob, have not been destroyed. The word of God for the people of God. So with the aid and assistance of the Holy Spirit, I want to try to preach this morning from the subject, the changelessness of God. The changelessness of God. Now, if you look up the word changelessness, you will find the word constant. Now, if you look up constant, you will see beside it the word steadfastness, faithfulness, or that which does not change. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that we live in a world that is constantly changing. Everything around us is changing. Uh, uh, the climate is changing. You hear all these politicians talking about climate change. And the change in the climate can persuade the ground to shake and, and cause volcanoes to rumble and tsunamis to crash into unexpected coastlines. Our technology is changing, constantly changing. Our information is so overwhelming. Changes are happening so fast. The way we eat. You know, one day the experts say that butter is bad for you. And the next day, the health experts come back and say, it's not so bad if you mix it with the right kind of foods. The health experts say that fat is bad for you. But the next day, they'll come back and say that certain fats are good for you. Information may be good one minute and bad the next. Yes, changes are taking place all around us. And not only are physical changes taking place around us, but our bodies are changing as well. Our health is changing. Your, your health can change from day to day. One moment, you can be in good health. But the very next day, a disease that's been hiding in the wings can become active in your body, and then your health begins to deteriorate. Do I have a witness? Even our physical structures changes as the years wear on. While we keep our resemblance as we age, and this constitutes a change from year to year. So, so when someone whom you have not seen in many years says to you, girl, you have not changed. I want you to accept those as words of flattery. Because what they say is not true. Because you have changed. They know you have changed. But most of all, you know you changed. Some years ago, women were wearing their dresses short, and then they were wearing them long. Who knows what they'll be wearing tomorrow, because fashions come and fashions go. We live in the days of church 
free agency. People change churches as often as they change their clothes. Marriages fail. Families fall apart. So with all of these changes taking place around us, where can we go to find that which is constant? Where can we go to find that which is unchangeable? Where can we go to find that which is permanent? I ask you this morning, Greenview, can it be found in the mountains and the rocks? For surely they will abide, and although the sacred scriptures refer to them as the everlasting mountains and the perpetual hills. Job declared in the 14th chapter, verse 18, surely the mountains fall, the crumble and crumble in way, and the rock is removed from its place, the waters that rose over the stone will eventually alter the rock. Now, geologists proclaim this same truth. They say that one drop of water beating on the rock in the same place for a long period of time can alter the contour of the rock. Oh yes, the mountains shall depart, the hills shall be destroyed, while ev with everything in this world is changing, while our society is changing from day to day, shaken by the winds of this world, once again, I ask you, where can we go to find that which is constant? Where can we go to find that which is unchanging? Well, our text today reminds us that no matter what's going on in the world, that we serve a God who changes not. For the Lord himself said, I am the Lord, and I do not change. That's right, God does not change. Now, I know what you're thinking. God in the past has changed his law or the covenant he has made with man and he has also sometimes changed the course of his actions in response to man's repentance. But God himself, his character, and the qualities that define him have never changed. There is nothing evil about God. He is not like man. He cannot lie and go back on his word. His purpose for good. And his ultimate plan for man is unchangeable. Yeah. The writer in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, said it like this. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Well, Dr. Palmer, you say that God does not change. But what is it about God that does not change? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Well, let's go to the Bible. Well, now, now if you, if you have to read the second chapter of Malachi. When we read that, you will discover that the people of God were unfaithful. All right. All right. They had turned away from God. And one commentary that I read says that the people were living in such a way as though God did not exist. And it was through the prophet that God was telling his people to come back to him. Yeah. And then we turn our attention to the third chapter of Malachi. And the Lord says, I, the Lord, do not change. Yeah. And that takes me to my first point. Uh, the faithfulness of God does not change. Yeah. The people of God were unfaithful, but the text reminds us that man might be unfaithful, but the faithfulness of God does not change. Pray with me if you will. Your family might be unfaithful. Your best friend might be unfaithful. Your mother and father might be unfaithful. Your spouse might be unfaithful. Politicians come and go. Relationships come and go. Friends come and go. But you can rest assured that God will be faithful. 
dependability, reliability, consistency, and faithfulness are found in God. And perhaps that's why the hymn writer was able to pin these words. Great is thy faithfulness. O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassion fail not. As thou hast been, thou for shall ever be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness. I ask you today, Greenview, can you ever remember a time when God was not dependable, when God was not faithful? Do you ever remember a time when God abandoned you? Do you ever remember a time when God left you by yourself? Do you ever remember a time when God let you down? I need somebody here this morning who can testify that regardless of your circumstances, that regardless of your situation, that regardless of what you're going through, that God is still good. There's never been a time when God's love didn't surround you. His mercy didn't keep you because God is faithful. Through it all, through it all, God is faithful. God does not change. God does not forget. He does not falter. He does not disappoint. He does not change because God is faithful. So the faithfulness of God does not change. Now, if God is faithful, that means his word is faithful. If everyone else fails, if everyone else fails to keep their promises, the one thing that you and I can count on is the word of God. Yes. Yes. You can't separate God from the word of God. Yes. And this takes me to my second observation here is that the word of God does not change. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Yes, we can stand on the word of God. In the 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy, it says, he is the rock. His works are perfect. His ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. In the 34th chapter of Exodus, it says, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, is slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. In 2 Thessalonians to chapter 5, it says, But the Lord is faithful, who established you and guards you from the evil one. Right. In Psalm 119, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Right. In the 24th chapter of Matthew, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, it says, he who has promised is reliable and faithful to his word. And the, the prophet Isaiah declared in the 40th chapter, grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. I tell you, when you can't trust anyone else, you can always trust the word of God because God is faithful. I tell you, life has shown me people come and go. Seasons may come and go, but God is faithful. Storms may come, 
winds may come, dates on the calendars may change. Oh, but the prophet reminds us that when all else fails, that the word of God shall stand forever. God's word is eternal. Yes, you can depend on God's word. God's word will sustain you in times of trouble. God's word will keep you. God's word will provide the only stability in an unchanging world. Oh, thank God for his word. His word will give you power. His word will give you strength. Thank God for his word. You can depend on God's word because God is God from everlasting to everlasting. Yes, the word of God will not change. You can stand on the rock of God's holy word. God's word will never let you down because the word of God shall not change. So the faithfulness of God does not change. The word of God does not change. And thirdly, there's one other aspect of God's nature that will not change. The love of God will not change. And this is perhaps the most wonderful aspect of God's character. God loves us in such a way that nothing that you or I have done in the past will ever change that. Now, this point is clearly illustrated in the story of Hosea and his unfaithful wife, Gomer. And this is perhaps the greatest love story in the Bible. Mm. Stay with me now. God tells Hosea to go and find a wife. And even before they walk down the aisle, God says, she's going to be unfaithful. Mm. And nevertheless, the more unfaithful she is to you, the more faithful and loving you're going to be to her. God told Hosea, I want you to do this because I want to, uh, I want to give Israel an, il- an, il- an illustration of how much I love them. Right. Your marriage will be a pageant and you will play the part of God and your wife will play the part of Israel. Yeah. So Hosea did as God commanded, took Gomer as his bride and not long after the marriage, Gomer gave birth to a baby boy. Now, at this point of the story, God intervenes. For God says that he would order each stage of the relationship. God intervenes and gives their son a name. He calls the son Jezreel, which means scattered. For God was going to scatter the people of Israel all over the face of the earth. Well, it wasn't long before Gomer conceived and gave birth to a baby girl. And she was given the name Loroma. And God said Loroma means not pity, because God says that the time will come when he would no longer have mercy upon the house of Israel. And finally, Gomer conceived another son, and Hosea was instructed to call him lo am I, which means not my people. For God says, you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Now, if the story were to end here at this point, this would be exceedingly dismal, and it would not illustrate the unchangeable love of God. But thanks be to God that the story does not end here. Once again, God intervenes and tells us how the story will end. God says, one day, I'm going to change the name of your children. I'm going to change Jezreel to Jezreel. It's the same name, but with a different meaning. 
a change from scattered to planted because in the ancient world, the gesture by which a man would throw something away was by which he would plant again. And moreover, God said, I'm going to change Loroma to Roma and lo am I to am I because the time is coming when I will again have pity upon those who will again become my children. Well, the time came in the marriage and when the events that God had foretold had come to pass. Hosea's wife, Gomer, began to look around. Her eyes caught the eyes of this handsome stranger. And it wasn't long before Gomer left Hosea. Gomer left Hosea for a man that could give her a Mercedes 550 and a diamond necklace this year. And it was equally certain this year when her lover had grown tired of her, she, she would be found with another man who could only give her some gold earrings in a Hyundai. Now, year, the year after, she would be rumbling through the garbage. So the time came when the time came when Goma was living with a man who did not have the means to take care of her. And the final act of the drama was approaching. The time, the time, then came the moment when Goma sank so low that she was sold as a slave. God told Hosea, go and show Goma how much you love her. Now, when a beautiful woman was on sale, the man would bid free, and the bidding was always high. There was Goma, no clothes on, and the bidding began. One man bids three pieces of silver. Another man cries out 15 pieces of silver. Another 10 pieces, 12 pieces, 13 pieces, and then all the bidders drop out when a voice from the back cries out, 15 pieces of silver and a bushel of barley. Hosea takes back his wife, whom he now owns, covers her body, and takes her back home. Unconditional, unchanging love. That is what the prophet Hosea demonstrated towards his unfaithful wife, Gomer. And God says that's how he loved his wayward people of Israel in spite of their unfaithfulness to him. God said he would continue to love them so that one day the people would return back to him and receive all the blessing that he has in store for them. In this story of Hosea and Gomer, we see the unchanging love of God. And that's the point I've been trying to convey. Though we may be unfaithful, God will always be faithful to us. Though you may fail God, God will never fail you. No matter how far you turn away from God, he will never turn away from you. No matter how bad you think your sins are, your heavenly Father loves you. Hey! Though you may stop loving God, God will never stop loving you. Hey, hey, hey! Any your life. There's no wrong. Listen to me. There's no wrong that you have committed that can separate you from the love of God. What can separate us from the love of God? Neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height or depth, nor any else in all creation can separate us from the love of God. Oh, I tell you this morning, Greenview, that God will never stop loving you. God's love will never change. God's love will never let you down. Do I have a witness? Your family might not love you. Your friends might not love you. But God will always love you.
Hallelujah. No matter what you do, do I have a witness? Hey, hey, hey. You know, I tell you what I like about God. See, you know, family and friends will tell you that I love you. But God says, not only am I going to tell you I love you, but I'm going to show you how much I love you. Hey. Well, some 2,000 years ago, God showed us how much he loved us. He couldn't send just anybody. He had to send himself. He decided to come down in human flesh in the form of Jesus. Jesus was full of compassion. He was full of grace and full of mercy. He was full of love. Jesus was faithful. He had... Jesus was put through a fixed trial. He was wrongly convicted. He had to carry his own cross. He made his way up to Calvary, and they put nails in his hands, nails in his feet. They stretched him wide, hung him high. He died, I tell you. And the Bible says he hung his head in the hemlock of his shoulders, bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. They placed him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. He stayed there all night Saturday night. But early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And he all right. Hey, hey, hey. Want to fight your battle? Won't he make your enemies leave you alone? Won't he put food on your table? Won't he pick you up, uh, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground? Uh, Won't he make your enemies your footstool? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Hey, 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 ain't he all right? Don't fool me now. Has the Lord been good to you? Has he made a way for you? Has he put food on your table? Has he paid your bills? Has he touched your body? Hey! I don't care what's going on in this world. I don't care what's going on in your life. Friends may leave you. Family may leave you. But the one thing we can count on is a God who does not change. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But God says, I am the Lord who does not change. And God's love will not change. I don't care how bad a sin you think you may have committed. God says, I still love you. And maybe there's someone here today who needed to hear that. So while we all stand, and maybe there's someone here today and, and I tell folks all the time, in order to be a part of the family, I'm not just talking about the church family, to be a member of God's family, you have to give your life, your heart, and soul to Jesus. You can give your hand to the pastor, give your hands to the deacon, but only God has the power to pick you up and turn things around. And maybe there's someone here today. We don't want you to leave here without walking down and giving your heart and soul to Jesus. Is there one here today? Why don't you come? Help your children. A refreshing word to give us the proper perspective, put us into the proper perspective in light of all the things that are going on around us 
we need to remember the changelessness of God. As he read in the scripture, I, the Lord, change not. And as we move forward in life from this point on, what we'll need is someone who's constant, whose love is constant, whose faithfulness is constant, whose word is constant, and again, above all, his love is constant and he's faithful towards us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chaplain Palmer. Amen. Let us stand to receive our benediction. Let us look to the Lord together. Now, may the grace of God in his unchangelessness and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. 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 As for me, As for me and, my house, and my house, we will, we will trust, trust the unchangelessness, the unchangelessness of, God of God and serve the Lord. And serve the Lord. Amen. amen. Go in peace.